So today's soapy offering is a five layer pastel soap topped with soap frosting and a soap dough egg. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Anne and along with my good friend Wayne, we run the Sussex Handmade Soap Company, which is a small bath and body business based in the southeast of the UK. And we also run this YouTube channel. And today we are going to be creating an Easter themed soap. We're going to be doing a five layer soap, which we are going to colour in pastel shades of mica. We are then going to be topping it with some soap frosting, which we're going to pipe, and we're going to add a little soap dough Easter egg to the top of each bar for decoration. I'm not going to show you us actually making the soap, so melting the oils, adding the lye, bringing it to a trace today, because this is going to be a fairly long video anyway, and I have shown that process in a number of our other soap making videos. If, however, you do want to see how we do that, then do check out our beginner's guide to soap making, playlist and in that you can actually learn about soap making so learn about lye learn about how to actually make the soap batter today we are going to be more focusing on the decorative aspect of the soap and actually putting the soap together we are going to be scenting it in mistletoe kisses by candle chat although it is called mistletoe kisses it doesn't smell Christmassy. it is just a nice fresh linen scent so that is the smell we are going today today with? That is the smell we are going with today and I don't think I've got a lot else to say so let's get on to the soap making. So we've made our soap batter now and brought it to a nice light trace and now we need to add in our colours. The colours today are all from Soaposh and we are going with this stack of pastel colours. I'm using one gram of each colour because I want them to hopefully stay nice and pastel. And if you want to see the full recipe, that will be down in the description. We've got 425 grams of batter in each of these jugs, but the full recipe is down in the description. And now I'm just going to add the mica, one colour, into each pot. And once I've done that, I'm going to stir it in to combine it and hopefully we'll have some nice pastel colours to work with. So just working the mica in with the spatula. And this is why I wanted our batter to stay quite nice and thin. I wanted to be able to work the colours in, but I'm also quite aware that by the time we get to our fifth layer, the soap will have been sitting for quite a while, so I didn't want it to be too thick to start off with, otherwise we run the risk of it not being pourable when we get to our later layers. I'm not adding the fragrance in yet. Another one of the reasons that I chose the mistletoe kisses is not only do I really like the kind of fresh linen scent that it gives, but also mistletoe kisses I have found has a tendency to really thicken the batter. And I'm going to try and use that to our advantage in today's soap making. And the way that I'm going to be using it to our advantage is by adding the scent in to each portion just before we pour it, which is then hopefully going to mean that each layer sets up quite nicely and quite firm so that by the time we pour on the next colour on top of it, it will hopefully give quite a nice firm base which is going to mean a less chance of our colours breaking through the layers. And I'm quite liking all the colours we're getting so far. They seem to be staying quite nice and pastel. I was a little bit concerned that if we use too much mica, it may end up being too bright, because I really want to try and focus on keeping this soap pastel, if at all possible, just because pastel to me is kind of like the Eastery colours that you see, those nice, nice, pretty springtime colours. So just the blue to go now. And if any of the colours are going to end up not looking pastely, it's going to be the blue. But I'm hoping by only adding a small amount of mica that we are still going to have a pastely colour rather than a bright, vibrant colour. So I'm happy with how these are all looking now, so I'm going to get them out of the way and pull in the mould. We're going to start with the green. This is the order of colours, so we're going to be going green, pink, blue, yellow, purple. 
So the green is going to be our bottom layer today. So now I'm ready to pour our green. This is the point at which I am going to add in our Mistletoe Kisses fragrance. And we've got 10 grams per portion. So giving it a quick mix with the spatula to make sure it's nicely incorporated. And now I'm going to pour into our mould to form that lower layer of soap. Scraping out as much as I can from the container so that none goes to waste. And I've given it a little shake and a tap down, which I haven't shown you because when I shake and tap down, the table wobbles and makes noise, but I've given it a shake and a tap down to layer the surface and hopefully release any air bubbles that were in there. Now we're gonna move on to the pink and do the same again. So going in with 10 grams of Mistletoe Kisses fragrance oil. And the pink mica that we used today, it was called Cool Pink. And as I said earlier, all of the micas we are using today are from So Posh. And now I want to pour the pink over the green. And although the green has set up fairly nicely, it's still got a slight wobble to it. So there's a slight chance that this pink could break through. To try and combat that, I'm going to pour over our spatula. And this should break the fall of the batter and stop it from breaking through the lower layer. So now 10 grams of fragrance into our blue. The blue is called Dreamy Aqua Marine. And in regards to the fragrance, you could personally choose any fragrance that you like. Obviously, just make sure that it is suitable for use in soaps and make sure you check the IFRA documents as well, just so that you know you are using it within the maximum allowed usage rates. And now it's the same again, pouring the blue over the spatula to break the fall. And if it does break through to the lower layer, it's not the end of the world, but I would just rather that that doesn't happen. The yellow mica that we're using today is called Buttercup Yellow, and it's a really nice, bright, sunshiny yellow colour. A really good choice for a soap with a spring theme, I think. <laughs> And once again, pouring over the top of those lower layers. And our last colour today is the purple, and that is called Silken Lilac. So quite a nice, vibrant, purpley colour there. Kind of lavender-esque actually, I would say. Perhaps not quite as blue as lavender, but it's definitely got lavender vibes going on. So finishing off the first part of our soap making today with the lilac colour going on top of our yellow. And you can see why I wanted that batter to stay nice and thin when we started, because although we have worked as quickly as possible, it is definitely thickening, thickening up now. Still definitely workable, but if we'd started with it at this kind of thickness, by the time we had got to pouring this layer, it would have been very difficult. So that is the first part of today's soap making, but as I said, we are going to use some soap frosting on top of this to create some nice peaked designs. I haven't generally actually done much soap frosting on our soaps on our channel, but I thought today we would just for a little bit of fun and because it's Easter, so why not? So for our soap frosting, I made another batch of soap with exactly the same base ingredients we used in this one and I will put the recipe for the soap frosting down in the description. We then leave it to kind of thicken so that it's got a nice sort of thick consistency. We pop it into a piping bag with a nozzle and then we're going to pipe it onto the top of our soap 
hopefully in line with the marker points that indicate where each bar is going to be cut. But I'm not very good at lining things up and doing things properly, so if that works out, it'll be nothing short of an Easter miracle. So I have decanted our soap frosting into a piping bag and I have fitted it, I don't know if you can see it very well, but with kind of a star shaped nozzle. Now before I start piping on our soap, I'm going to do a few little test pipes on our plate just to make sure that it is firm enough because I'm not convinced we're at quite a firm enough consistency yet. Do you know what? I reckon that's going to be fine. It's holding its shape. That's going to be perfect. We'll go with that. So what I'm now going to try and do is stay within my lines and I'm just going to pipe three little splodges. Along each bar of soap. Shall we do this to music? Let's do this to music. Now I'm going to go back along the soap and fill in the designs, kind of along the middle for more piping goodness. And now to finish, we're just going to do one more pipe across the centre. So this is how it is looking so far. And now we just need to get our Easter egg decoration on top. So these are the Easter eggs that I have created for today's soap and they are made from soap dough and my soap dough is just the same recipe that I have used for our main soap and our soap frosting today. Nothing different about that in any way. I'm not going to talk too much about how I made the soap dough. Um, the eggs, I just shaped them, then I dusted them in mica, the same colours bar the purple that I used for the layers. However, if you would like to learn more about how to make soap dough and how to create things using soap dough, then do check out our playlist on soap dough and that will go into a lot more depth about how to actually create it and work with it. The Easter eggs today are going to be used to top our soap. So... Which colour so which colour shall we start with? Let's start with a, a little blue egg. And I'm just gonna place them onto the top of that last bit of piping. And I'm making sure that I'm in my lines so when I cut there's no disasters, hopefully. <laughs> There'll probably be disasters. There always is. But hopefully we'll end up with some that work. So blue, after blue, let's go with pink. So again, the pink one on the top. Then I reckon green. I'm trying to do it in a similar pattern to the way we did the layers. So green there. And finally, yellow. Just there. And now I'm just going to repeat that up the length of the soap.
and here we have our Easter themed soap. Very happy with how that's looking at the moment. Pleased with that piping, pleased with that Easter egg design. So what we are going to do now is leave it, leave it alone, let it sit and relax for 24 hours and then we shall come back tomorrow, we'll chop it up and we'll see how it's looking and how those layers on the inside have worked out. Hopefully there'll be no breakthrough and hopefully we're going to end up with a pretty pastel Easter soap. And just like that it is 24 hours later and we have unmoulded our Easter soap loaf which I'm quite happy with, I think it's looking good at the moment and now we are going to chop it up. So I'm going to position it on our soap cutter and try and make it that none of the eggs are going to get chopped through and I think that is looking okay. So we're going to go in now and chop through this loaf. Whoa. Oh, that's loud. Whew. There we go. That was pretty tough, actually, that one today. Um, not helped by the fact that the table leg like, sort of bent a little bit while we were doing that, so that was, uh, that was tough. <laughs> right, let's pull out a piece and see how it's looking. And there we have it. Oh, <laughs> one piece of our Easter egg soap. I'm pretty happy with those lines. I think they've worked out nicely. The only slight bit is the green and the pink, where the pink has very slightly gone into the green, but that is no issue at all, really. So feeling happy with how that's looking. Let's pull out one more bit and have another quick look. Let's go for this one here. There we go. One more piece of Easter egg soap. So two side by side, a little pink egg, a little blue egg. And I'm feeling pretty happy with how these are looking. So here is the Easter egg soap and I am very happy with how it has turned out. I'm really happy with how the layers have worked. I'm happy with the colours that we've achieved. I'm loving the smell which is wafting up to my nose and I like the little Easter egg decorations on the top. So overall, in case you haven't already guessed, I'm very happy with how today's design has turned out. So thank you for watching today. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment and let us know if you have made anything special for Easter and if so, what have you made and what designs have you gone with? If you enjoy our channel in general, don't forget to hit subscribe and also hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time we bring out a new video. We will see you for another video later on this week or early next week. And until then, have a very happy Easter and enjoy any extra time off that you might be lucky enough to be getting. Bye for now.